Hello my friends, Julia here and I'm so happy you're joining me. Let's call this video an artsy lesson for me in creating free and absolutely imperfect. So I'm going to use Dina Wakely's paint, stamps and college paper. And I'm starting off with a coat of gesso over a spread in my big dilutions journal. From there we go to Ranger's texture paste and a gorgeous stencil because I want some texture and depth. I'm using a spatula to spread the paste through this beautiful stencil on both pages and keeping it to the corners because I don't want it to interfere with my focal points. I chose a stamp set and a couple of stencils from Dina Wakely and from there this grew naturally into something I like and now it's time for paint and I chose two greens, two blue and two purple. I'm diluting my paint with water and bear with me because I'm trying to get the paint to run down my page into the nooks and crannies of the texture paste and drip down. I'm tilting my journal and use a spray bottle with water to get the effect I want. First with the dark paint evergreen and then the lighter lime. I put a paper towel at the bottom to catch the paint and I just love how it tints the texture paste. Texture paste from Ranger is like paper when dry, so it takes the color beautifully. When I diluted the lime paint, it runs down my page and give it a gorgeous wash of lime green. Next up is turquoise and I do the same procedure, but I try to catch the paint from running down too far to the right, because I have an idea now for what is coming next. And I have a bottle of water with a pipette and I use that to dilute the turquoise and get it to drip down. But here comes trouble, there is a big crack in the middle of my spread from all that water, but I solved that by using my book pages. I tear a few pieces of the pages and use multi matte medium to seal that crack, and I kind of like it more this way. Next up are the purples. I have blackberry and eggplant, and I do the same as before. The sealed book pages are dry now and I let the blackberry drip down and then the eggplant. My friend Linda gave me these purples and I just love how they look. But as before, I try to stop the drip from coming down too far on this right page. The upside to gesso is that I can wipe off the drips I don't want because it seals the paper from taking in all that water. My final color is the dark blue and I put it in the middle to get just a hint of that dark blue and let it drip down. At this time an idea is forming. I am going to use one of Dina Wakely's college papers with a face and these pieces I'm tracing on book pages are the hair. So hang in there and it will all become clear to me and to you. I'm using Dina Wakely's gel medium to glue down that college paper with a face I like. I bought a bunch of collage papers on second hand and I've been itching to use them. When the face is glued down and sealed by the gel medium I move on to the hair and that bun on her head is my own usual hairdo on a good day. I use the gel medium to glue down and seal the hair and when I feel I need more of those strands of hair I cut out two more and do the same with them. I use a Faber-Castell marker and trace the hair on her head. And then we move up, move on to some stamping with the stamp set sent to me by the generous Linda. A 
As soon as I saw this abstract stamp set, I knew I wanted the imperfect circles as flowers. I stamp in onyx black ink and I cover with clear embossing powder and heat set until melted. I heat emboss these to make them withstand all the paint I would still add. And when I stamp in a journal, there is no stamping twice. I get the impression I get, and there is a calmness in that. But I still have a lot of work left on both pages, so stick around and see where this leads. I need some more greenery around the flowers and I choose another Dina Wakely stencil with leaves and I use a makeup sponge to stencil in the leaves with the darkest green all over my left page. When a leaf is done I can use a baby wipe to wipe off any paint left on my black circles because they are heat embossed. Next, I take my black Posca pen and trace around the stencil texture paste to bring that back from the background. And that is what much of my mixed media is about, pushing things back into the background and later bringing it back into focus. Now, it's time to make these circles into flowers and I use a black marker to draw in stems for my flowers and then I bring out that black bear paint and paint in petals on one of the circles. When all the petals are done, I fill in the white spots and spaces in the circle and wipe off paint left on that black circle. This flower will later be known as the black sheep among these flowers because you will see me put in a lot of work to make it better. And as a first option, I take my white gel pen and trace those petals and the spots in the middle. I leave that flower for a while and focus on the other two circles. I decide to make them into buds and I use turquoise to fill in the tallest bud. I move over to the last circle and use the same color, but now I have decided to make them dark blue at the base and turquoise higher up and where the two colors meet, I blend them together. Then I take that black Posca pen again and give my two flower buds a few petals at the top and I fill them in with black. So next I'm having another go at that first flower. I use a dotting tool my mother gave me but you can use the end of a pencil or even a toothpick to make white dots at the end of each petal in white gesso. And when I get going with the dots, I can't seem to stop and I make clusters of those white dots here and there on my page. Gesso is a thick paint and gives my dots some extra texture. Next, I'm using my dark green to fill in the flower stems and then we move over to the right page for a while. My first color for the hair on the woman is the grey called elephant. I dilute the paint again with water and color her bun and parts of the hair strands in grey. Grey is such an underrated color in general and for hair specifically. I always seek a way to balance my work and in this case it means that the tips of her hair is colored with lime green from the left page and then I put dark green at the very tip and blend the greens together. I do the same for the bun on her head and then I move on to her face. Mm. 
With all that green, I decided to use the purples for her face. I use both blackberry and eggplant, and I make it darkest where I want my shadows, and more diluted where the highlights are. When I'm happy with her face, I have yet another go at the black sheep flower, using a smaller dotting tool and purple paint to make mini dots all around that white dot at the top of the petal that wasn't showing up well with just white. And then I go on to make mini purple dots in every white dot in the middle of the flower. In the name of balance I bring in more turquoise around my artsy lady and blend it out to white with water. Now, I don't know about you, but I need more black, so I bring out a dilution stencil with a cool border and stencil in a border with black paint. Then I bring out that black Posca pen again and give the flowers some swirls at the top for the flower buds and around the flower blooming coming out between the petals. To make some kind of a sentiment I use my new Uniball pen that writes well on paint and I write my message a few times on those strands of hair. It reads, be brave, one more day. Finally, to bring out that black border, I use my white gel pen to trace that whole border with white, and to me it makes a big difference. And when the border is all done, these pages are finished. Thank you all so much for watching my videos, and I hope you will pop by soon again. Until the next time, see you soon.